Kill Us at the Flower Moon! Kill Us at the Flower Moon is a long movie that is long. Even has a long title now that I think about it. I haven't heard anyone critique this movie without mentioning its length. Personally, I don't care about the length of the movie, so long as it earns that runtime. Want a three hour movie? You better have a three hour story to tell. And fortunately, this is a movie that earns its runtime, as every event shown adds up at the end. And I can't say that about every Scorsese movie. How's The Irishman end, by the way? I stopped two hours in, I have no interest in going back, so I'll never know. Another criticism I see flowing around is that the story of Native American people is being focused on white people again, but this isn't like Dance with Wolves or a Green Book, where the plight of real victims of racism are used as white guys' journey of redemption. It's about asshole criminals and how their greed tore a community apart. On the other hand, giving more personality and focus to the character of Molly would help lend a voice to that community. She was sick for a good chunk of it, so it makes sense why she was sidelined, but the first two hours could have focused much more on her as an individual and not just a pawn in Leonardo DiCaprio's story. The real draw of this movie, however, is the villain, William King Hale, played by Robert De Niro. He's a pretty scary guy, not because he's overly violent and yelling like a lot of the top villains, but for how manipulative he is, as in like an ally, even speaking the Osage tribe's language while twisting people to his own ends. From the very first scene, you can see how he's manipulating Leo's character to meet his goals, planting ideas in his head and seeing how he can be useful to him. And speaking of old Gatsby, he plays Ernest Burkhardt, Hale's nephew. He's a really interesting character, a ruthless criminal folded by his own uncle, but he's also a caring husband to Molly and to his children. He's a real asshole, no doubt there, but there are layers to the character, and Leo brilliantly plays all of them. From the fearful lackey, to the caring husband, to manipulating other people the way that Hale did him. That's the way the movie handles its themes of racism and greed. It's not cruel white men rubbing their hands with glee while talking about how they'll take the savages for all that land and money. The more soft manipulation, offering a can hand one moment and knife the other, all while convincing themselves that they're the good guys and alleviating themselves of guilt. Even when everything falls apart at the end, Ernest is still lying to both the law, his wife, and himself. It's not outward riots and violence, but more stern sideways glances and silent judgement. The characters feel real, and that sells the story way more than most movies which portray overly idealistic innocence and powerful cruel villains which I feel helps convey its ideas much more effectively. The music plays a huge role in bringing the story to life. Both American West guitars and Native American drums in the scenes with their respective races, helping emphasize the different cults that play, but also the emotion of the scene. A lot is done with just music, I've noticed, with so many characters are lying that music actually helps sell the real intent. In conclusion, Kills the Flower Moon is a brilliant story with an excellent cast to lead it, so I'm gonna give it five stars. It could be better by giving more urgency and character to the Osage people, but what's here is a well-told tragedy of greed, manipulation, and cruelty. And if that three and a half hour runtime is too much for you, you can watch both Captain Marvel movies in roughly the same time frame. In fact, that will probably piss off Mark Scorsese more than any criticism I could give. Take care now. Bye bye then.